officials told us she didn't want to leave her jail cell at the Arapahoe County Detention Center. Isabella Guzman now facing first degree murder charges. She was uh, charged with first degree murder after stabbing her mom about 79 times in the face and neck at this house. Suspect in a deadly stabbing overnight. A woman was found dead in a home on South Lima Street. This is near Parker in Havana. Eric Bluefer is live with the details on the investigation. Having recommended these videos about this girl named Claire Miller, whose videos are going viral. 14-year-old who's being held at Muncie State Prison is accused of stabbing and killing her disabled sister, Helen. everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you don't know who I am my name is Haley Elizabeth and I do videos pertaining conspiracy theories controversial people true crime and all things spooky scary skeletons so if you're into any of that you can subscribe and if not totally chill let's just sit back relax grab a snack grab a few snacks let's talk about some true crime stories what if okay so look i bought this could i wear it is it cute if i wear this for the video <laughs> it's so big it like goes off screen got it from sephora because i was like oh my god they're gonna love it and then i put it on and i was like girl now why are they actually gonna roast me in the comments? I think I just have like a small head so it makes it look bigger than what it actually is. Is this distracting? Maybe for October. At least you guys are now introduced to the idea. So if I pop up with that in October, you can't be like, oh my god, Haley, what is that thing on your head? I'm gonna be like, you're acting like you were surprised. Nonetheless, in today's video, we are going to be talking about Isabella Guzman and Claire Miller, the two girls that ended up committing terrible, terrible crimes and then afterwards got romanticized for it on TikTok. Gen Z is like going to be the last generation. Like if anything else comes after this one, like that is going to be a train wreck. But before getting into today's video, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Glammetic. Glammetic is a magnetic lash brand that leaves lash glue a thing of the past. And might I actually add, Glammetic is female owned, so... Mm, y'all already know why I love it. Not only that, they also make putting on lashes 10 times easier. As you guys know, I don't really have the best track record when it comes to putting on lashes because lash glue is a, such a hassle. You put it on the lash and then sometimes the lash glue is like gloopy so it doesn't work out and then it's just all over the place. But thanks to Glammetic, I no longer have to deal with those stresses. Okay, so I'm about to put on the lashes and I just want to show you guys how easy these lashes are to put on. Today, I'm going to go with the gossip lashes as you can see it has six different magnets as well as two anchors on the end also inside the packaging it includes a magnetic strip so when you're done with your lashes all you need to do is just put them back in there and then look at that the eyeliner that I'm gonna be going in with is deep space shake it up shake it up shake it up and you're just going to apply your eyeliner per usual and once you have your eyeliner to your liking you're going to wait around 30 to 60 seconds to let it do its thing if you are the type of person that doesn't really like pen liners Glamnetics got you as well here is their Glamnetic eyeliner but it is a brush say I was doing this right now and I mess up oh my god what am I gonna do don't worry Glamnetics that it got you covered makeup correction pen say I did all this and I'm like oh my god no I want that thing off of me look at me go look at that it's gone now look at this ready Wow come on now I was gonna say I think I suck at putting on eyelashes but no these are so easy take your anchor put it right underneath your lash wait hold on these actually look really good and that was so easy that always used to happen to me but with other lashes i would literally just have to sit there with it put it underneath connect the two magnets together and look 
Wow. These are the Gossip Lashes if you want something a little bit more natural. And these are the Venus Lashes if you want something a little bit more dramatic. With these lashes, they stay on so, so well. I'm tugging on these lashes and they are not going anywhere. A little side note about these lashes. I used to stray away from using lashes for everyday use because of my glasses. They would always hit against my glasses and it was really hard for me to, you know, see the world. But with these Glamnetic Gossip Lashes, I can push up my glasses. I can see the world. This is what your lashes look like with glasses on. Sort of a note that I thought I would mention in case you guys wear glasses and you came across the same issues. So if you want to, you know, wear some falsies and look extra good on nights out, the gossip ones do not hit against your glasses. All you need to do is throw on your eyeliner, pop on some lashes, and you're done. And I know you're probably freaking out right now. You're like, where do I get me a pair of these? Now, if you want to access this amazing discount for these amazing lashes, all you need to do is use my code on the screen and click the link in the description. Glamnetic also offers a 100% money back guarantee, but I don't really think you're going to have to do that because as I said, these lashes... I think I've already made my case with how much I love these lashes. The lashes, you know, are a little bit too expensive for you, but you still want to try them out because you want to look your best and you want to feel confident. Glamnetic helps you out and offers quad pay. So you don't have to pay the full price at once, but instead make small payments. So it makes it easier all while, you know, you conquer the world. Again, to access the discount, all you need to do is use my code on the screen and click the link in the description. And again, thank you, thank you to Glamnetic for sponsoring this video. Anyways, back to your video. First girl that we're gonna be starting off with is Isabella Guzman. Isabella Guzman was born in June of 1995 in Aurora, Colorado. There isn't really much information about Isabella's childhood. The family was very big on keeping this whole case kind of quiet and not really like talking to the media as much. Isabella was an only child and she had a mother named Yoon Mi and a father named Richard. After the parents, Yoon Mi and Richard, had gotten a divorce, um, Yoon Mi took full custody of Isabella, but then when Isabella was seven years old, the mother gave Isabella back to her father because Isabella was just getting way too bad and the mother just couldn't take it anymore. Now, eventually afterwards, Isabella ended up going back to her mother's house, not of like family members and friends testimonies about Isabella. They all said that Isabella was a very troubling child. She was always rebelling against her parents. Even at school, uh, she never really cared about her grades. And even in high school, whenever people like asked her what she wanted to do for the rest of her life, she never really had any goals or aspirations outside of high school. Now, along with Isabella's bad behavior, she would also get into a lot of fights with her biological parents parents, Yoon Mi and Richard, even like at the age of 10 years old, would constantly fight with her parents over random things, sometimes small things, sometimes big things. One of these things being that the mother and father, Yoon Mi and Richard, were actually both artists and they got a studio together when they were still married, but then when they divorced, they obviously, you know, couldn't afford to leave their job. So they ended up continuing to work with each other and sharing the studio because although they were divorced, they were still kind of on good enough terms in order to work together. This was actually one of the things that Isabella really hated about her parents. She hated that they were artists because artists didn't really make that much money and she would always see other kids like with expensive clothes or getting like the latest iPhone. Seeing them have all of these luxurious things and she really resented her parents for not making enough money or choosing Using a career path that didn't make them enough money so then she wasn't able to live the life that her friends were living not even really understanding that Isabella's parents were probably just trying their best and pay the bills first I guess so Isabella really did not like her parents for that as well and there would also be times where Isabella after school would have to go to the studio and be there with her parents like if her parents were working late or something and she absolutely hated it sometimes she would just go home home and like be home alone for a couple of hours. She 
she just did not like spending time with her parents, which I thought was super, super interesting because usually when you're like an eight-year-old kid, all you want is your parents. And so to have this really aggressive relationship with your parents at just seven to 10 years old, moving on from Isabella's childhood, going on to her teenage years, she was just the same as she was when she was a kid. As I said, in high school, she didn't really have many aspirations for the future. Now, this could also be because possibly Isabella was very, very depressed. Usually when you're super depressed, you don't really look forward to the future or don't really figure out any future plans because you think in your head that you're probably not going to live that long. And so this could definitely be due to Isabella being extremely depressed. There's very little information about this. I just kind of tried my best to look at it as many documents and read as many things as I could to get the information that I have. So because of her lack of future plans, she ended up dropping out of school her senior year. And it was also because her attendance and her grades were just getting so, so bad. Isabella's parents were extremely disappointed in Isabella for dropping out in senior year because as I said, her parents just didn't really have that much money to begin with. And for Isabella to just drop out her senior year without any warning, it's kind of like her parents spent all this money for her to go to school, but then she ended up not even finishing school. At the time, Isabella also did have a car, so she was barely home. She was always out and about. She would sometimes spend the night at other friends' houses, and the only time that she really was home and talked to her parents was to argue. She just did not have a good relationship with her parents, although she did live with her mother. Now, during her high school years, her mother, Yoon Mi, actually got remarried to a guy named Ryan. So Ryan was now her stepfather and was now living with her. And lo and behold, Isabella absolutely hated her stepfather as well. They would also get into fights. Ryan, the stepfather, would specifically get into arguments with Isabella because Isabella was, I think, only like 16 years old at this point. And she was constantly sneaking boys into the house. And obviously, Ryan had to tell the mother and so the mother would then yell at Isabella for sneaking boys into the house and then thus making Isabella mad at Ryan for being like a snitch basically. She never really saw her biological father too often. It was mostly just her stepfather and her mother. Down the road, you know, following up to her dropping out of high school, instead of just getting into like verbally aggressive arguments, Isabella would then start spitting on her mother. Isabella also started writing emails and sending very threatening threatening texts to her mother saying that her mother was going to pay for all of the damages that she caused Isabella. The mother knew how aggressive of a child Isabella was. So she knew that when Isabella made her threats, she probably wasn't like joking around or these were not hollow threats. And it got so bad to the point where even the mother had called the police once on Isabella saying that she did not feel safe in her home anymore. And she knew that one day Isabella was going to do something to her. And I didn't mention this earlier. I should have mentioned it in the childhood portion. Both of her parents, her biological mom and biological father, were also Jehovah Witnesses. Isabella kind of grew up in that Jehovah Witness sort of scene. It started when she was a child that she just didn't want to go to church anymore. She didn't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. And this kind of followed her into her teenage years. So that was just one of the many things. There's very little official documents talking about about her childhood. Um, I couldn't really find any like old police reports from her mother. Everything that I'm kind of telling you is based upon word of mouth from like family members and friends. Now, as I was saying about the hollow threats, at this point, the threat started to get a lot worse for Isabella and her mother. Ryan felt like he was extremely, you know, useless in this situation. All he could really do was protect the mother. I feel like with a child being that bad and also with the money that they did not have, it's not as easy as, you know, sending them to military school or like sending them to a program for troubled teens or something like that. Send her to a whole like two week rehab, um, a whole like two week re, was that word? Rehabilit, re, 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 I was going about a, um, re, rehabilitation. I think it's pronounced rehabilitation program. Rehabilitation. 
because as I said, Isabella's family did not have a lot of money. So if they barely had enough money to buy Isabella a phone or something, I doubt they had enough money. It wasn't until the night of August 28th, 2013, where Isabella would make her final threat to her mother that she would eventually follow through on. Isabella and her mother one night were just having one of their, you know, typical arguments. They were just kind of bickering back and forth. It wasn't any Anything of significance as I said they argued all the time later on that night Isabella said a threat to the mother saying the words you will pay for what you said to me tonight now, when analyzing this email the mother didn't know if that meant like oh I'm going to pay one day tonight like she's gonna do something to me tonight or was it something that I said to her tonight that I will later on pay for she actually called the biological father who like again Isabella doesn't really talk to so the biological father ended up coming over to the house to talk to Isabella in hopes of you know like maybe creating some positive changes in the household Richard the biological father said that him and Isabella went outside in the garden and just you know looked at the sunset and just talked for almost like over an hour just for her to open up about her life at home and then he you know started finding out that she was abused at a very young age by multiple family members all of the things that were going on at home her arguments with Ryan and her mother and she just didn't really feel like being there anymore the father kept on telling her you know you're 18 now so if you get a job and you you know go for the next few months save up a bunch of money you could actually get a place of your own and and you don't even have to be here anymore. So if you stick it out for just a few months, you could actually, you know, start living a life on your own. The father said after the fact that he really thought he got through to Isabella because Isabella on the outside seemed like she was really into the idea of leaving the house and getting out of there and never having to like see her mother again if she didn't have to. He had broken some sort of ground with her and realized like, hey, maybe things might start looking looking up but unfortunately that was actually all a front on the outside Isabella was super into the idea but on the inside Isabella was actually just constructing the plan that she would then pursue in the next few hours so the mother was extremely on edge all day she just didn't really know what that meant and then later on that night when the mother and the stepfather Ryan came home she went straight up to her room and stayed in there for the rest of the night. Now, this was not unusual for Isabella. She would typically stay in her room all night and not really associate with anyone. At around 9 p.m., that is when the mother said to Ryan, hey, I've, you know, I had a long day at work today. I'm gonna hop in the shower and then I'll meet you in bed. And Ryan was like, okay, I'm gonna go downstairs and watch some TV and then I'll like meet you in bed as well. So the mother goes upstairs, takes a shower, and Ryan goes downstairs and just watches some TV. And he hears the shower go on, you know, he's not really thinking of anything, but what he hears next is a very loud thud and a bunch of commotion going on. Muffled voices yelling, a bunch of banging, a bunch of throwing things. Like it was just nothing clear, but it was definitely something was going on. He runs upstairs, he's about to run into the bathroom, but before he can, the door slams in his face. He's struggling with the bathroom door. He's trying to open it. Ryan was like putting his entire weight on this door trying to open it and Isabella for some weird reason just randomly possessed this superhuman strength and just like shut the door on him and then was able to lock it as well. He immediately like doesn't know what to do. He's screaming for Isabella and he hears the mother inside screaming for Ryan's name. He doesn't know what's going on. He just hears a bunch of banging, a bunch of muffled screams, just commotion going on in there, and there's nothing really else he could do than run downstairs, grab his phone, and call the police. He runs back upstairs, and he's on the phone with the police. He told the police that his 18-year-old daughter, Isabella, was locked in the bathroom with the mother, and he thinks that she is about to kill the mother. So he's saying all of this whilst Isabella is like in there. So all of this commotion only lasts a few minutes maybe like three or four and then all of the sudden he starts to hear the screams from the mother die down a lot he puts his ear up to the door and he hears 
her mutter her last words and it was Jehovah. Once everything started to slowly die down, there was just this silence and he looked down at his feet and he saw a pool of blood coming from underneath the bathroom door. Now at this point he was still panicking, he was freaking out because he was still on the phone with the police and the police were just asking him like 21 questions trying to figure out his address, what was going on, what is Isabella doing now? And when he looked back up at the door, he saw that the door had unlocked and coming out of it was Isabella. She had blood all over herself, all over her clothes. She had a bloody knife in her hand. Ryan, when he's, you know, recollecting this moment, he says that when Isabella walked out, she didn't really look super shocked. She didn't look like she was scared. She had, you know, just gone to the bathroom and then walked out of the bathroom. Like she had an emotion on her face, but it wasn't no emotion. Isabella walks out of the bathroom and immediately she does not make eye contact with Ryan whatsoever, but instead just walks right past him and right out of the house. Now, Ryan doesn't really think to turn around and go grab Isabella. He already called the police. So his main concern was trying to save the mother, even though at this point the mother was such a lost cause. The autopsy later then revealed that the mother was stabbed a total of 79 times. This didn't really look like a premeditated crime. It didn't look like something that she was planning on all day. It just looked like a very spur of the moment thing. A very, very passionate crime because most of her wounds actually came from her face, meaning that Isabella was having to look at her mother's face while doing all of this. All of this wound up energy and hatred towards her mother. She just needed to release that energy and so then she did. And when investigating the crime scene a little bit more, they also found a baseball bat in there and it was believed that after Isabella had stabbed her mother 79 times, she went in with a baseball bat to hit her multiple times. And so again, going back to the passionate crime thing, Obviously, if you stab someone 79 times, they're a lost cause. Like there is no way you're bringing them back. And to also hit them with a baseball bat afterwards to make sure that they're dead, it really just showed police that this was a lot of pent up tension, not pent up tension that could just be caused by one argument. When word got out that Isabella had done this, as I said, she just walked out of the house. So she's on the loose with a knife in her hand. Guzman stabbed her mother 79 times in the family's bathroom last week. The Guzman's stepfather told police that he heard thumping sounds from upstairs, then his wife calling his name. He tried to get into the bathroom. Guzman blocked the door, so he called police. He didn't know if this was just a one-time thing for her mother or if she was, you know, on a murderous rampage and just killing all of the people that made her extremely mad. So immediately when this happened, they put out a missing persons report for Isabella and saying that she had a weapon and she could be potentially dangerous. So if you see her, call the police immediately. Do not approach her. Do not try to talk to her. She's probably either like very scared and just not in the right state of mind. So just call the police immediately. Now the next morning, the police actually received a anonymous tip, not actually like relating to Isabella. They said that they thought they saw a dead body in the middle of a parking garage. And when the police showed up, they didn't find a dead body, but instead they did find Isabella sleeping in her car right off the bat because she had a knife in her car. She had still on all of her bloody clothes. As I said earlier, of the police saying that this was probably not premeditated because if it was premeditated and she was constantly thinking about it, she would have thought to, you know, probably put a change of clothes in her car, probably could like put a full tank of gas and like live a life uh, off grid or something. Immediately when they found Isabella, they didn't take her to the police right away, but instead they took her to the hospital because Isabella herself had actually suffered some really deep wounds such as cuts because especially if you're stabbing someone 79 times and there's 
blood all over the place things are gonna get slippery so that's how she got a bunch of cuts all over her hand she even got such a deep of cuts on her hand that she needed to get stitches from that even Isabella to this day still has scars on her hand from after she got all stitched up and she was good to go they brought her back to the police station where she was in for questioning as well as a psych evaluation as I said this happened in Colorado and like what happens in Colorado so this was like a very big shock to the police and they were like okay well we need to do our protocol this was just so bizarre to them. She was actually going to plead guilty to the first degree murder of her mother, but it wasn't until about a few days prior to the court date where the psych evaluation results came out and it was said that she was diagnosed with schizophrenia and they were going to go for the plea of not guilty for reasons of insanity. This is where I kind of talk about where I was saying earlier of Isabella being abused as a child because disorders such as you know DID or schizophrenia they all result from extreme childhood trauma and so this is when Isabella started to talk about her very abusive relationship with a lot of her family members she said that she was actually sexually abused by multiple family members growing up and so the police thought that maybe this um, childhood trauma is what caused her schizophrenia and she also said that for the past few years she has been hearing voices in her head and the night of of the murder she actually heard a voice in her say that her mom was actually named Cecilia and in order to save the world she needed to kill Cecilia so when the police heard this like they immediately thought like oh you're hearing voices you're schizophrenic obviously they should take the insanity plea but then the Colorado court then decided that she was in fact not guilty for reasons of insanity and instead of being sent to a prison she was then sent to a psychiatric hospital in Colorado now this is is actually the part where Isabella ends up getting TikTok famous. All of this happened in around 2013, but it wasn't until 2020 to 2021 where Isabella ended up getting a lot of like recognition. Bizarre to know that Isabella had committed such a terrible crime and she just looked so so innocent she wasn't really like smiling at the camera she was just kind of like sarcastically smiling she was looking a lot at the cameras she would look on the cameras and she would smile the way that she walked and this is so messed up people were literally making like fan edits of her oh this ain't smart but mama i'm in love with a criminal and this type of love is irrational, it's physical. Psycho, a little bit psycho, and now she's screaming, I'm my, my, my mind. Oh, she's hot, but a psycho. Oh my God, this is. also there's like fan pages of her as well because people just think that like she is just so beautiful i guess like people just romanticizing the fact that she killed someone and not only did she kill someone she's like also pretty and a lot of the comments in these fan accounts like are so so disturbing i remember reading one comment that said something along the lines of like oh you know i don't like when people kill other people but the fact that you know she did it it's so hot to me and i just thought that was really messed up and so that is actually how she ended up getting her tiktok fame is through her court appearances and people you know romanticizing her it got to a point where whenever people would say something bad about isabella on tiktok hey um hot take unpopular opinion maybe we shouldn't be romanticizing people that have literally stabbed people 79 times and then after they were done stabbing them beat them with a baseball bat kind of a hot take kind of an unpopular opinion people we even like went as far as defending Isabella and saying oh well the reason she did what she did was because she was being abused at home and like it was you know it was justified if you look back at the court documents 
she didn't kill her mother with the intent of the mother abusing her. She killed her mother because she claims that she was schizophrenic and that her mom was named Cecilia and she was going to save the world. So for everyone saying that like, oh, she killed her mother because she was being abused, she was justified, that wasn't her reasoning that always believed the victim. And I, you know, it's not me to say whether or not she was or was not being abused. Isabella could have 100% been abused at home. She could have been like in the worst situation possible, but I don't think killing someone in that way is ever justified. You know, I could understand if you accidentally killed someone whilst you were, you know, being raped or something like that. I feel like killings like that are sort of justified but in this she literally just killed her mother when she was about to hop in the shower like it wasn't like she was trying to defend herself and as I said her and her father had that really long conversation of like oh if you just like stick it out for like a few months like you could really get out of here and for some reason that idea of leaving and never coming back and living a life of her own never really appealed to her the only thing that appealed to her was killing her mother and that was it even though she despised ryan as well and she also despised her biological father she sat down and had an entire conversation with her biological father she walked right past ryan it was just like her mom was the main target and honestly these edits literally make me so sick to my stomach because imagine losing your wife and then going on tiktok and seeing all these teenage kids talking about the person that brutally killed your wife saying that like oh she's innocent she's cute i wish they would just let her out so like we can get married this girl getting like so much praise over the internet not even realizing that she just took a human life out of her own free will as i said like there was no struggle shown on isabella's body she literally just grabbed a knife and stabbed her mom when she was getting in the shower there was no self-defense part of it could have just walked out of the house drove her car and like lived off grid and like never saw her parents again she could have done that but she didn't she had the need to kill her mom yeah i know that she like stabbed someone 79 times and then beat them with a baseball bat but that's okay because she's pretty. That did not sit well with me. I was like, y'all are so down bad. Like y'all are dangerously down bad. This is kind of a side note and I think I'm gonna make a video about this. Tell me in the comments below if you guys want like a video on this about like people on TikTok faking mental disorders because they think like having Tourette's is like cute, quirky, and fun. So then they fake having Tourette's or having DID. I mean, we've seen Trisha Paytas do it multiple times. As I said, I could make a whole video about it. So let me know if you guys want that. So anyways, this is kind of what I mean by people glorifying something that is not cute, fresh, nor fun. So as for Isabella, right now she's 26 years old she's still in the mental facility she says that she's been like you know heavily medicated over these past few years and she genuinely feels like she's better and she's ready to integrate with society again and she's tried so so many times to appeal her sentence because her sentence was like probably to be in that mental institution for the rest of her life this is also something that i really wanted to touch on quickly there's this big misconception when it comes to the insanity plea a lot of people think the insanity plea is actually a lot better than getting a prison sentence which is not true at all um pleading for reasons of insanity is not an easy way out it's not that like instead of going to prison you're going to like the beautiful paradise of a mental facility there are so so many horror stories coming from mental facilities and saying that they treat their criminals like criminals they very rarely care about them and since they are also medically treating you they can give you as many drugs as they want there's people living there years and years in this mental institution and don't really remember any of it because they're just so drugged up all the time and they also force you to take your medicine as well because there are a lot of people in there who feel like you know the drugs are suppressing who they naturally are so they won't take their medications stories of treatments that they do to people in there that actually worsen their mental state instead of helping it the sexual abuse cases in there as well 
and uh, Isabella also said in an interview, like, you know, recapping where she is now, she also said that in the mental facility, she herself was sexually abused in there. I also want to mention that not all places are like this. There are many, many mental institutions that are actually really good, and you hear a lot of amazing stories of people actually getting, like, the help that they need and getting better and getting out of there, but I feel like when you're a criminal, it's a lot different. They don't really care about you as much as if you were to go in there like through a hospital or something as well as insurance if you have a lot of money and you have good insurance then of course you're going to be put into a good place but if you come from an unfortunate family and don't really have that much money and thus not having that great of insurance they're not going to treat you as well because you're not giving them as much money so that is a part that i wanted to mention that not all places are like this um i've had like a few friends who have went into mental institutions and they you know have said some good things about it and actually have gotten better because of it so it's not really like a scary place it's just you gotta be careful like you know literally everywhere in the world so a lot of people think that pleading for insanity is actually a better deal when in fact you could have just spent like 10 years in prison but now you're spending the rest of your life in a mental institution it's not like a regular prison sentence once your 10 years is up you're done like you're going to a mental institution and you're there until proven better and sometimes even like proven better people can put on really really good acts to pretend that they're better when they're actually not you then have to fight for your freedom to get out of there when you could have just you know easily not so easily because prison is never easy but you could have just spent 10 years in a prison instead of now spending the rest of your life in a place that you pretended to be insane to be in that's basically the story of isabella guzman and so now we are going to be getting into our second story and that is the story of 14 year old claire miller i think i did this in a video before a little like intermission just to kind of you know pause the video calm down because i feel like i need a moment to process everything that i just said breathe a little bit take in everything that we just said today is a beautiful day it's getting fall time um and that's actually really really fun trying to do more natural looks basically but i just don't think i look good natural so that's fun i have coffee and it says sarah on it who was Sarah? I have no clue. If you saw the ending of my last video, there was a little ghost in there, I think. A lot of you guys said that it was like actually an orb and I actually started freaking out. I think the house needs a cleansing. Thank God I'm spiritual because they know I will not shut up about it. So that's why they don't bother me anymore. They know that if they try something to me, I will never shut up about it. And so then that's why they leave me alone. But yeah, so that's the intermission. Intermission over. Now let's talk about Claire Miller. Claire Miller is a 14 year old girl born in Mainham Township, Pennsylvania. Claire was born to her mother Marie, her father Mark, and her older sister Helen. Now her older sister Helen was 19 years old while Claire was only 14 years old, but with Helen, she was actually disabled with cerebral palsy. Now, if you don't know what cerebral palsy is, um, I guess this is kind of like a universal example. If you've ever seen Breaking Bad, the son in the show actually has cerebral palsy. In some cases, you can't really speak very clearly, sometimes not even at all. You lose ability to walk, so people tend to be wheelchair ridden or like the boy in Breaking Bad. He's not wheelchair ridden, but he does use, um, oh, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, they're like, I don't know what they're called and I feel bad. It's like they're basically mechanisms to help the person walk, to live as normal of a life as they can amongst society. But in her sister Helen's case, she had a pretty bad case of cerebral palsy to the point where she couldn't even really talk at all. And when she could talk, it was not in full constant sentences. And also she was wheelchair ridden. So she actually had to have constant 24 seven help. She had to get around to move places. She couldn't really bathe by herself. She just needed help and that was completely fine. Her parents were very, very wealthy, especially her dad. They lived in a very like bougie place in Pennsylvania. Their house actually costed around half a million dollars. There is no way I just said costed. 
There is no way I just said. As well as Helen and Claire going to Lancaster Country Day School, which was one of the most expensive schools in that area to go to. It was a private school, costed around $22,000 a year to go to, so. Okay, so it's like two days later. Turns out costed actually is a word. I looked it up on Quora, so it has to be correct. So, no, not illiterate, just ahead of my time basically literally a college tuition actually kind of worked out that their parents had money because then they were able to support helen and support all of her needs you know get her a caretaker for when she grows up when helen was a baby and they found out that she had cerebral palsy they actually started to make a fund for helen so even after like you know when the parents were old and they couldn't take care of her anymore they could then hire a caretaker or give her the correct support system that she needed in order to continue living her life Life. Growing up, it actually looked like the family was a pretty close family, especially Claire and Helen. Claire and Helen never really had issues with each other. As I said, Helen was one, nonverbal, and two, like couldn't really walk anywhere. So it, there wasn't really like much beef to be had with Claire and Helen from, you know, testimony of the father. Claire and Helen were actually pretty close. Claire would always help out with Helen whenever she could. She would go to all of Helen's doctor's appointments. If Helen Helen was having a bad day and she needed to stay home from school. Claire would also stay home from school to help Helen like would do whatever she needed to do. Now aside from Claire's family life, Claire's social media life, you know, the life away from her family. She actually had a pretty successful TikTok page. She had around 22,000 followers by the name of Spirits and Such Consulting. So on this TikTok page, she would just be like a normal 14 year old girl. She would post like lip syncing videos, dancing videos, Videos. She would post a lot about anime and cosplaying. People say like, oh, violent video games are ruining our society. They're gonna, they're, they, they're creating more killers. Why is it that every teenager with like homicidal tendencies are obsessed with anime beforehand? I don't watch anime, but like I'm kind of scared to because I think they're putting some sort of something in these shows to make people do what they do. Anyway, I'm not blaming anime for the reason why she did what she did. I'm just saying like, this is a weird. So you're probably wondering, Haley, where does all of the actual meat of the story come in? It just seems like Claire was doing pretty good. Like she was very like helpful and supportive of her sister. She had a TikTok account. Like she would just do cosplay. She just seemed like a normal 14 year old girl. Claire did kind of feel like since all of the attention was going to Helen, that she would not get as much attention as her sister. And she kind of grew a little jealous of that. Since Claire did have a bunch of like, you know, mental issues as well well as like suicidal and even homicidal tendencies and this was confirmed actually by a friend so a few days before Claire committing the crime friend actually said that Claire was talking to her about a few of her you know suicidal and homicidal tendencies now this friend knew prior that Claire was suicidal but she didn't know that she actually you know thought about killing someone she didn't say who she was going to kill she just said that it would be cool to know what it felt like. Claire had all of these mental issues. It was said that whenever Claire would go up to her parents and express these, you know, medical issues to her parents, her parents just wouldn't really pay attention to her psychological needs or her medical needs as much as Helen's because they kind of saw it in comparison of like, oh, well, why am I going to spend all this money and send you to a psychiatrist when your sister Helen has it so much worse? And like, you should be grateful that you're not, you know, in that same position as her sort of thing. So it's kind of like Claire was a little bit neglected when it came to her mental state. Now, this doesn't mean that this is a possible motive for what Claire is about to do, but it was kind of one of the theories that I saw online. It was on the cold winter night of February 21st, 2021. So this year, Claire Miller called the police at around 1 a.m. and kept on repeating the words, I just stabbed my sister. I stabbed my sister. Claire in this mindset is extremely hysterical. She's freaking out. And also the police are trying to, you know, calm her down and say, it's okay. The police are coming by. And since this case is sort of private, I couldn't find the original phone call, but I was able to find descriptions of it. There didn't really say much over the phone, but as soon as the police get there, 
Claire was standing outside as if she was waiting for the police. They saw gloves in the snow and like random blood splatters in the snow. And there was also snow all over Claire's hands as if she was trying to wash her hands in the snow. By the way, her parents are asleep right now. So one in the morning, her parents are asleep. Helen was asleep. Claire like gladly leads them to Helen's room. And what they see in Helen's room is Helen. She's laying on her bed, a bunch of sheets and pillows covering up her body. And when the police picked up one of the pillows off of Helen's face, they saw a knife sticking out of her throat. They immediately called the paramedics. The paramedics did all they could to try to save Helen. But unfortunately at 436 that night, she was then declared as dead. So then immediately the police took in Claire for questioning and try to figure out what happened, get a clear statement of what it was. Parents were extremely hysterical when they woke up and realized that this had all just happened because as I said, Claire and Helen's relationship from the outside didn't seem very rocky at all. It was very odd for Claire to commit such a heinous crime on someone that couldn't even defend themselves. I don't know, like imagine just waking up and then finding out that your daughter killed your other daughter. Like that is just so traumatic and it would be such a big surprise. Now, as soon as the police took her into questioning, her mugshot got all over because as I said, she was was a semi like well-known TikToker at this point. So people were making TikToks about her and I won't show the romanticizing comments of Claire because I just think like they're really, really messed up, but I will show a few of people kind of yelling at other people. I think it's really, really messed up when people see these things as their, you know, like sexual fantasy rather than realizing that someone has literally died. And this isn't just, you know, a fantasy. Like this is something that someone did to an innocent human being that couldn't even defend themselves and she ended up gaining around 11,000 followers just overnight. The aftermath of it all is that the high school actually came out and said a few words, basically giving their condolences to the families and everyone involved. Since this happened so recently, the trial for Claire hasn't been publicized, but it was said that when she went to her first court hearing, she actually showed up wearing pigtails and a collared shirt because you know how some people say that like, um, oh my God, what was that one girl? She showed up wearing like wire glasses, having her hair all to the side and like looking very innocent because typically killers will try to look very innocent looking, especially women. Hopefully that their appearances will change the opinions of others. And this is kind of what happened with Claire. She ended up wearing pigtails and a collared shirt, making her look like just genuinely a little kid. But you know, the crime scene does not lie. It's very hard for anyone to try to sympathize with her knowing what she had done to an innocent person that again, could not defend themselves even if she tried and was not verbal to like scream to her parents or like scream for help or anything. Like it was just, it's just so, so heartbreaking. Like, how could you, I don't know. Like, it's literally so crazy because again, there was no motive mentioned. So since we don't know the actual legalities of everything, because everything since she is a minor is starting to kind of be under the radar as far as her sentencing and everything. But fortunately, in the state of Pennsylvania, even if you are a minor, if you commit a major act such as first degree murder, you then have to be tried as an adult because in the state of Pennsylvania, they think that if you are capable of murder, someone, you are capable of, you know, deserving a adult sentence. So Claire, as of right now, is dealing with an adult sentence. The adult sentencing for first degree murder is either life in prison with no chance of parole or the death penalty because Pennsylvania is one of the states that still allow the death penalty. Okay, new info alert. Oh my God, look at all the dust in my room. Get out of here, y'all. New info alert. Basically, I was looking up the difference between first degree murder and second degree murder because I just did not know. Apparently, in the states of Minnesota, Florida, and Pennsylvania, where Clara lives, there's such thing as third degree murder, which I didn't even know existed. Basically, first degree murder is when the murder is premeditated, like you were planning on doing it. Second degree murder is when there's no plan, it's more spur of the moment. An example would be Isabella. Isabella, that was like spur of the moment, not premeditated. That would be considered second degree murder. 
But third degree murder is a killing done by accident. So I think I said earlier, like for example, if you're getting raped and you accidentally kill your rapist out of self-defense, if you live in the states, Florida, Minnesota, or Pennsylvania, you could plea for third degree murder which is only a max 25 years and or $40,000 fine. Another example of this is uh, when George Floyd was murdered back in 2020. The officer that killed him only got 22 and a half years. A lot of people were very mad at the fact that why didn't he get life? It's because he pleaded for third degree murder, meaning murder by accident. So the only max that he could get was 25 years. There is no such thing as life imprisonment for a third degree murder. So if Claire decides to switch up her story and say that it was an accident, she could only be looking at 25 years. She could be getting out of prison when she's 39. She So she could get out of prison when she's 39. Okay. Now I have my own opinions about the death penalty. I feel like it doesn't really help anything. It doesn't really help the victim. There are so, so many studies. I even did like a report on it in high school about like how the death penalty does not really do much except just free up a bed in the prison. It doesn't really serve any sort of justice because now the person that killed the your loved one is now resting peacefully in the afterlife. Like they're not really suffering for any of the crimes that they committed. I won't get into it, but I have my own opinions on the death penalty. I just feel like it doesn't really do much, especially even that they get to have like a last meal, whatever they want in the entire world. So they're literally being treated like a royalty before getting executed. Why would you want like a person who killed so many people to go out like that as of currently she's either facing life in prison or the death penalty like for the rest of her life like imagine doing something when you're 14 and then being 86 and still suffering from those crimes I'm not saying like it shouldn't happen because I feel like once you kill once you're kind of instilled with this adrenaline sort of I've never heard of a serial killer saying they're murdering stories oh it was the worst time in my life i would never do it again like it sucked they always have like very good reviews about it and they're like oh my god yeah like it was just such an adrenaline rush it's like you're never going to stop especially if you have it in you to do it in the first place because apparently um she was actually staying in the lancaster country uh prison she actually set a record she was the very first female male minor to be in that prison and she was actually just recently transferred um i think a couple months ago to a real adult prison she is definitely going to be tried as an adult uh probably 99.9 percent .9 going to be in life in prison or the death penalty and it's 11 11 make a wish y'all so that is basically the end of today's video uh, again i want to give a big big thank you to glamnetic for sponsoring this video and if you enjoyed today's video make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe today i did fake freckles for the first time i don't even know if you can tell let me can you even tell do they look real i tried to go for like a cute little girl next door sort of vibe. As far as my own thoughts and opinions, I don't really have any. I feel like Isabella definitely did have a traumatic childhood because if she, you know, had the most perfect childhood ever and she was like, you know, surrounded by love and support, I don't think she would have as much rage in her to do what she did. I think the whole thing with Claire is extremely bizarre. The motive of it is so unknown and I feel like that's why it was so surprising to a lot of people moral of the story stop romanticizing murderers some of y'all are dangerously down bad because that is gross hot take i know i feel like i should do a suggestion of the week i'll do a suggestion of the week so if you guys have watched my I forgot what video it was. Maybe it was like two videos ago. Diary of an Oxygen Thief by Anonymous. And now that I have read the book, oh my God, look how overgrown my nails are. I'm getting them done today, so don't worry. But oh my God, should have put a trigger warning on that before the video. Basically, this book, Diary of an Oxygen Thief, it's about this guy who was a raging alcoholic and he used to get off on 
mentally abusing women and he did it to so so many girls he would be with these girls for like maybe weeks months and like sometimes even years just so one night he can just immediately like hurt them in the worst way possible and they can feel as bad as he felt because since he was an alcoholic he was very sad and mad until one day he meets a girl that ends up doing the same thing to him as he used to do to girls and he finally receives the pain that he was giving out for years and years and years so this book is just about that and i think that's why it's anonymous because i would not want my name out to the public if i was out here doing stuff like that this one is the sequel to this one as i said he used to like mentally abuse women and stuff like that but then he stopped because he became sober but i think this book is about how even though he was sober he continued to mentally abuse women but online like catfish girls very excited to read this i tend to read books very fast so if you guys want like a book recommendation maybe like every two weeks i'll definitely do that for you what else has been going on <laughs> nothing much i don't know what i'm gonna be for halloween like everyone knows they're like oh my god i cannot wait to go to spirit halloween like i i'm gonna be this and i'm gonna be that and i'm like girl i don't even know what i'm gonna wear tomorrow like let alone a month from now so yeah i don't know what i'm gonna be for halloween i'm go crazy go stupid girl i really really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and if you want to follow me on any of my social medias such as my instagram that will be linked down below i used to say instagram tiktok and snapchat but i never use tiktok and i never use snapchat instagram and i never use instagram either but like i don't know i just don't really post on social media that much except for youtube because youtube is like the only social media platform that i like so if you want to follow me on instagram to see like me post every once a month um that will be linked down below as well as my p.o box if you want to send me anything and also also as well as the products that i use on my face so if you're like girl what was the product you were using to create those little freaky frecks all over your face that will be linked down below so you will then be able to know what i use so with that being said do something that makes you happy today